dude, like how crazy, how crazy is it that Blackmagic just announced a 6K camera? <laughs> oh my God. At $3,000, like three grand. I, I had to make this video because there's like no way that, think about this. 10 grand, Komodo X, 10 grand. And Blackmagic drops a full frame 6K camera for three grand? We have to talk about it. We like, we have to talk about this. This is the reason why I'm saying I am going to be selling my red cameras so I can switch over to the red, to the black magic, not red, selling red, to black magic. <laughs> what is it called? A pixie something or other? This is the camera that we've all been waiting for. This is the camera that we've been asking for. This is the camera. I'm going to ruin it for everybody here. That we've had available to us <laughs> in a form factor that maybe was not super awesome for a lot of people. But now they just put it in the box. So let's go ahead and just dive in and talk about the awesomeness because there is a lot of really cool things happening with this camera like the fact that this camera is able to produce a full frame 6k image in a form factor that makes it easy to use on a gimbal on a tripod on any kind of support dolly system um jib you name it without the awkward football balance thing makes it actually a very, very good camera. But there are some things we got to talk about, right? Because it's still black magic, which by the way, like one, I'm going to say 80% of anything that you could find wrong with black magic is very easily fixed and very easily overlooked or excused because of the price point. Like, you can't complain about things because of that price point. And that is just a fact. So, I have some notes, and I want to make sure that I hit them all. Because when I was watching this, I'm thinking, damn, 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 time and time again. Which is why I'm saying <laughs> I'm going to sell my red cameras and I'm just going to go with black magic. But that might not be totally true. So you might want to stick around to the end and then sort of figure this out. Because if you don't know already, I am being sarcastic. So I don't want to waste anybody else's time. And if you want to stick with me, awesome. And if you don't, I understand. So let me pull on my notes. Uh, yeah, so I've already hyped up the fact that I'm selling my red cameras to go to Blackmagic, which we all at this point should know that that's not true. <laughs> um, I will say that this is the, the most I've ever seen Blackmagic truly, like, listen up to what people are saying that they want or they need for their productions and then attempt to give it to them. And that is saying something. Because as you all know, brands that, that I really like and have used over the years, one of the things that I, I can't put a price dollar or amount to is my ability to communicate with someone that makes me think that they can hear me that they understand me, that they are listening to me. So if Blackmagic has decided that they want to listen to their customers, they want to stop trying to make cameras look like footballs, 
and make cameras that work with the tools that we all have to use on a regular basis, that is a win for everyone. It's a win. And you can't deny that. Because that makes other camera brands. Obviously, I'm not talking about Red. They've already given us a box camera. Some might even say that Red is what inspired this movement to try to move towards a red camera or a box camera, a camera that is easy to rig, easy to mount, easy to use, easy to travel with, and so on. So the fact that Blackmagic is starting to pay attention, it shows us that they are much more interested in Building a community, building a relationship, building a long-term client than some of the companies that refuse to listen to us. So that is a win. The fact that they're going to, in this new um, Pixie, whatever this, I don't even know the, the actual true name of the camera. I should probably look that up. Because, okay, so Pixis 6K. The fact that they're going to allow us to have open gate, which is something that a lot of people really crave, right? Really want and have full anamorphic support. That's another win. It's another one of those things that, you know, camera companies, some of the big popular camera companies, Canon, Sony, Fujifilm. Fujifilm's probably not big, um, at least not in the realm of motion for most of us anyway. Nikon, no one is really going after that anamorphic market. The company that absolutely went after the anamorphic shooter or the person that wanted to shoot anamorphic was Panasonic, right? With their GX... Um, series and they did a hell of a job albeit maybe not always exactly the way that we all wanted it but they gave you the tools to be able to allow you to shoot in a way that you could do it on a budget that was not hollywood film budget and that was pretty freaking awesome i'm going to get to the comments and i want to get to the comments um, later on, but I want to make sure that I hit all the different points because I think that these points are kind of important. Black Magic put in two CF Express Type B cards into their camera. Now, why does that matter? Well, mainly because we get to see a lot of different content on YouTube talk about how you can't be professional unless you have redundant media recording. And the fact that Blackmagic is able, is, has been able to do this now in the camera, it sort of defeats that whole thought process of we can't do this because there's too much heat. And we then need to manage all that excess heat in the body. So that argument goes straight out the window. I'll tell you that for me personally, this is after, I guess, the better part of 11 years of shooting on cameras that did not have redundant media. So whether it be Airy or Red, primarily those two, or even Blackmagic, because I shot Blackmagic also. Over this time, I've never had a media problem where... I needed that redundant media source to actually allow me to deliver whatever project I was shooting on. It just has never happened. On the opposite end of that, on Canon cameras, having, you know, I'm talking like the C300, C300 Mark II, Mark III, C500 Mark II, uh, C200, having the same exact media on, the, on more than one card in the body, being able to record the same track or a different version of a track in that same body was convenient 
for things like editing, which we're going to get to in a second here because there's a lot more goodness with this new Blackmagic announcement. But also making me think I was more secure than I maybe thought I was or needed to be. And that was kind of a feel-good thing. Mind you, I don't shoot weddings. So if you're a wedding photographer, you probably should be shooting no more than one card in case your card fails because you don't want somebody to sue you. But I don't do that. So I've never really had to deal with that stuff. But again, two media cards in the same body and being able to do this completely eliminates this whole idea of it's too much heat and we can't do it. And Blackmagic somehow has been able to do it. So now we need to get the rest of the camera brands on board to allow us to do it because that convenience of, and this is what I was kind of alluding to before, for me personally, having two of the exact same cards really meant relay recording. So I could go all day on, say, a C300 Mark II with two 512 cards because if I filled one up, it would just start recording on the next one. I never actually used them for relay recording. I'm sorry, for redundant recording. I only ever used them for relay recording. And that was kind of a big deal for me because it allowed me to not have to think about managing cards. Because, you know, the fact is, is that I don't have a dedicated DIT on staff on every project with me. And if I don't have to think about that, it kind of matters. It matters. Okay, moving on. They put SDI out on this new camera. I wish every single camera, regardless of whether it's a mirrorless, a hybrid, or whatever, please, let's get rid of HDMI. And I realize that HDMI means it's more budget for a lot of people because SD, uh, HDMI monitors are way cheaper. SDI cables are able to do 4K, you know, if that's what you want, um, out of the camera easier than SDI because SDI has a lot of different flavors. 3G SDI, 6G SDI, 12G SDI, you know, the cable matters. And some of those cables carry current. And some of that current could equal potential problems for the camera. I get it. But if you're trying to target a prosumer or someone that might be at a, a, a little tier right where, the, where you're going, like from prosumer to like, this is how I make a living 100% of the time, like me, SDI works so much better. So SDI in this camera body is incredibly welcome. Yes, and thank you. Please, everybody, follow that path because it's awesome. SDI is way more secure. SDI makes it so that if I have to mix cameras on a set, a professional set, where I'm working with other people who this is what they do for a living. That is what they are expecting. They're not expecting HDMI. And when I ask them to adapt me <laughs> from HDMI to SDI, they all look at me like, dude, are you freaking serious? Which has happened. It happened to me in, in Japan. So there you go. So that's pretty cool. Mini XLR audio on that camera. I think that that's actually pretty cool. Mini XLR is better than no XLR. Would I have liked to see, especially on the camera that size, full-size XLR? Absolutely, because not having to adapt XLR actually makes a freaking difference. For someone like me, it means less cable management and less cable management is actually a good thing again 
when you're shooting solo or on a very small crew. So, yeah, very cool. I will say that the biggest complaint that most people had, including me, with the the Black Magic Pocket 6K full frame, I think that's what everybody calls it. I didn't buy one, as you all know, is the actual form factor. I think a lot of people wanted to see that camera change form factors to then treat it more like it was something worth having, buying into. And just sort of shoehorning into your workflows. I'm happy to say to you that at least on paper and from what I can see, with the exception, very few exceptions, like dual media cards and SDI out, you've now gotten the exact same camera that has already existed, the full frame 6K in a rectangle box. So exactly what you wanted is exactly what you got. If you didn't buy the full frame Blackmagic 6K pocket camera because you hated the form factor, but you loved everything else that that camera had to offer, you now have the ability to buy that exact same camera in a different form factor. We'll see how many people actually pick it up. I think it's a great thing for many of the reasons that I said at the beginning of the video. Everything from rigging to working with it is going to be that much easier. And, of course, SDI out makes it easier to work in a professional workflow. And I think that that matters quite a bit. Uh, let's see. I did see a, I'm getting calls from, <laughs> from people that are probably like, what the hell are you doing? Going live talking about you're going to sell your red cameras. Um, Y'all need to watch the entire video so you can see why I'm doing this. But at the end of the day, I saw some accessories or a plate that gave the camera itself, the camera body, which by the way, the Ursus also had a, a lot of different mounting options, which I thought were actually really good because if you need to mount accessories, whether it be audio transmitters or wireless transmitters or the combination of the two or time code or anything else, having more mounting points makes it way easier to work with, way easier to rig. And if you're needing to do more than just, you know, 16 by nine video, horizontal, and you need to do vertical, well, more mounting points is actually better. They actually came out with a plate that will work with that camera, giving you the ability to mount a lot of accessories, mounted in a lot of different ways on a lot of different rigging equipment. I think every single camera company, and I wish, again, this is, like, you all might think I'm being super sarcastic against Blackmagic, but I'm not. Because what they are actually doing is they are helping pave the way and showing other brands, other brands that you and I use on a regular basis, what it is that we need to make the equipment and the gear that much more usable, that much more valuable to people like you and I. Because as I was saying, if every single camera company, if Canon, the next camera that Canon came out, also had an accessory that made it super easy for me to rig in any configuration that I might need, from a rover to a drone to a jib to a gimbal to horizontal video, and they actually made the accessories very similar to the way that Airy makes accessories for so many different cameras, including Canon cameras and red cameras and sometimes accessories that even work with black magic cameras they could make an ecosystem 
that someone like you and I would buy into and absolutely use all of the time. But instead, we have to rely on third party, Condor Blue, which, thank goodness, they've evolved into making some really high quality stuff now. Was not always the case when they started, but it all got better, right? Sales makes everything better. Or Bright Tangerine. They've always made terrific stuff, but it's priced at terrific prices. So if these camera companies somehow came up with a way that made it easier for us to use their systems in the wide variety that we are all using their systems, how freaking cool would that be? Tell me you wouldn't automatically be like, I'm buying whatever Canon's putting out for their rigging system. I'm buying whatever Sony's putting out for their camera rigging system. It's kind of like the EVF, right? When Canon puts out an EVF that is specifically made to work with their cinema line, the people that rely on an EVF for a living will buy that EVF, just like a remote. And that's also true for Sony. If you're on a Sony Venice or you're on a Sony Burano or any of their cameras that have a dedicated EVF, if you're in that ecosystem, it's way better and you're going to be much happier buying the Sony EVF than you will ever be buying a third-party EVF. And that's just a fact. So I think every camera company should sort out what these different accessories are to make it workable in whatever these different scenarios are and then create packages similar to what Red does. You know, here's a base production package. Here's the, the body only. Here's, you know, an advanced production package. Whatever that might be that give us the ability to, without having to sort out how to make something work, we could just buy that package and put it to work the day it arrives. I think that that matters, and I think that's important. And I think that is and should be the direction that every single one of these companies that wants to go after people like you and I, for them to move forward in building their product lines. Um, let me just <laughs> make sure that I'm not missing anything else. So it looks like the dual ISO is going to be exactly the same as the pocket full frame, 800 and 3200, which both of those actually are really awesome. On the R5C, which is a camera that, you know, I'm using right now, and it's also a camera that basically is the backup camera to literally every camera that we shoot with, including this one. Yeah. The R5C's dual native ISO comes in clutch. And I think that Blackmagic having dual native ISOs on their cameras is such a long way from way back when we had, you know, a native ISO, or not ISO, it was ASA of, what was it, 400 on the original 4K camera? And if you decided to go to 600 or even push it to, I'm sorry, I think it was 640 or then go to 800, you were basically looking at garbage mush. The fact that Blackmagic has been able to sort this out is a gigantic win for everyone. Everyone who will use it, everyone who wants to get into this world of content production, video production, videography, whatever you want to call yourself, they're giving you tools that are better than tools that we had five years ago at a price that we could never get five years ago. So that's how awesome, you know, what Blackmagic is doing and represents today actually is. 
So it also looks like, at least on this new camera, um, you're going to be able to use the Resolve Cloud, which is really cool, right? If you're working in a live environment, so imagine you're shooting an event, and it doesn't really matter if it's a corporate event or a private event. If you could, as you're shooting or as you finish a clip or a take, upload a file, a proxy file, obviously not full res, because, you know, our internet speeds are not there today. But imagine some remote editor being able to work on an edit that makes it super easy for social media distribution. Because the fact is, is that social media distribution equals highly compressed. And if you're going to share the social media, starting out with a proxy file, it's actually overkill to whatever the final delivery will be. So you could be at a live event, you could be at a remote event, you could be on the other side of the world, shooting anything, uploading to the cloud, and then when you wake up in the morning, you have from your remote editor person, a bunch of social media ready clips to help promote. So it doesn't matter if you're ENG, if you're live production, or if you're somewhere in between all of that, doing commercial and corporate work, you're able to take advantage of that. Of course, if you're on a RED system, RED being Komodo X, Raptor X, you already had that ability in the past. I think the difference between what we were able to do with RED and what we're able to now do with Blackmagic is that Blackmagic is trying to fill out their ecosystem where they own the software, they own the cloud service, and they own the hardware. And where with RED, we had the hardware that was capable and we needed to rely on a software company to allow us to do this. And then we needed to rely on a cloud service to allow us to relay that information. So that is, again, one of those other huge things that Blackmagic is like seriously looking at the market and looking at this landscape that we're all in and then saying, how do I fill the gaps? How do I make ourselves that much more competitive? How do I make myself more attractive to both enthusiasts, prosumers, and then the people that might be a little bit more advanced than a prosumer, kind of like me? I think Blackmagic already has a solid footprint in live production. I've seen Blackmagic a lot in concerts. I've seen them a lot in speeches. You know, so some of these events that need the camera work. I've seen them in churches. So Blackmagic has been learning from these different use cases and trying to sort out and innovate how to create more tools that are accessible to more people in a way that allows them to grow, but then also allows people like you and I to grow. And that has a lot of value to it. A lot of value. Oh, let's see. So it looks like to me, the frame rates didn't change at all from the uh, full frame 6K, which if you're cool with that, you know, good for you. If you're not cool with that, then just again, I really, it feels like to me, it's basically the full frame 6K camera in a form factor that not everyone is going to be criticizing Blackmagic for. It feels very much like the same camera in a larger body with the addition of the second um, media card, the SDI out, and the mini XLR. So I guess the, the pocket full frame, did it, didn't it have mini XLR? I don't remember. 
So if anybody needs more frame rates, then maybe that this new camera is is maybe not ideal for you. But if you never or rarely shoot at 120 frames per second in 6K, then you're probably going to be very happy with it. Because of all of the other conveniences, primarily rigging, like rigging is probably, I would say that if I had to rank the things that I complain about, you know, when it comes to Blackmagic cameras, the rigging is probably going to be my number one complaint. The plastic body is going to be my number two complaint because, you know, how much confidence can you have in just plastic? And, and that's just, it is what it is. So I'm going to leave that alone for just a second here. There's no way that Blackmagic is going to put in Blackmagic RAW into this camera and not give someone who purchases the camera a full key to use Resolve, right? So you could use the, the full version of Resolve without any of the limitations, which of course include networking. That is one of the benefits of using the paid version of Resolve. And then also being able to deliver at resolutions above 4K. I think those two factors make the paid version of Resolve more than enough reason why it's worth paying for. Because in, an, in a perfect world, if you're capturing in 6K or 8K, you want to output in at that resolution instead of down res to something that fits into a free box. Unless you're only delivering to social media. And there are people that that is what they do for a living. And also, that's okay. So for those, there is a free version. For those of us that need to be able to render at whatever source we captured, we get to pay for it. And I think that's totally fair. I also, this was actually more of a shock to me. It's it's a good shock in a way, but I was glad to see that they're releasing this camera in three different versions. <clears throat> L version, EF, and PL. I think it's incredibly smart. L means they're not leaving behind the people that purchased or previously purchased the 6K full-frame camera. So that's important. EF means they're nodding to every one of us who previously purchased the Pocket 4K, Pocket 6K, and the 6K Mark II, all Super 35 cameras. And... They're acknowledging that there are lots of people who own EF lenses that maybe either weren't ready or didn't want to transition into a $10,000 or more camera system. And they're enticing them by giving them an EF version of a camera. Why didn't they do RF? Probably because licensing costs more. But if you think about the history of EF as a lens mount standard, there are so many years of users over that time span that if someone was thinking about, considering, wondering, wishing that they could move away from their, I don't know, 7D, whatever camera system they might be using or have been using to get 
a full frame field of view with the additions, <clears throat> the benefits that you get when you go full frame. Way less noise, way better dynamic range in general, more color information, a wider field of view on your EF lenses. This was brilliant on Blackmagic's part to bring back the EF mount because that is going to allow them to talk to so many more people. And of course, PL, right? There are those groups of people who think PL is the only standard if you are pro, who maybe have PL lenses or have adapted anamorphic glass to a PL mount of some sort. And that adds that flexibility. I feel like a PL mount on a camera in 2024 sort of gives you that badge of I'm the real thing. <laughs> I know that this sounds totally stupid. And it is. But it gives this idea of Oh, yeah, I shoot with PL lenses because, you know, they are the standard. But it also gives you the flexibility to say, I'm going to jump ship on systems whenever I want to because I can try to adapt PL to essentially any other lens mount. So Blackmagic, in my opinion, by releasing this camera with three different mounts, is playing... 3D chess. <laughs> They're basically saying, we understand that the market itself is this big. So here are the Sony only people, here are the Canon only people, here are the L mount only people, here are the PL only people, and here are the Fujifilm X only people, and whatever the other ones are, smaller, right? So how do we get the largest chunk out of this pie? Well, if we take PL, and we add EF, and we add L mount, all of a sudden, we're at better than two-thirds. That is terrific on their marketing instinct, insights, and the ability to connect with the community. And you got to give them props where they deserve them. And they definitely deserve them being able to understand that there might be people who are dipping into more than one of these buckets. And how do you please the majority? And I feel like they absolutely nailed it with the L mount, the EF mount, and the PL mount. Again, props where props are deserved. Absolutely nailed it. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Okay, so <laughs> some people are not going to be happy about this, about what I'm about to say, but it's, it's true. So I noticed that on their website, they're effectively saying that autofocus will be available for compatible lenses. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm going to predict right this second, today, 2024, so this is... April 12th, 2024. Autofocus on Blackmagic cameras are going to be single point autofocus one time thing, which is terrific if we're talking about still life. In other words, if all you're doing is taking stills, pictures, where nothing is moving and you could touch your screen or click a button to do autofocus on whatever you're trying to focus on and nothing else changes, that is perfect. But this is a cinema camera. This new camera that Blackmagic is releasing 
is not intended for stills. It's intended for motion, which really means that if you want to get out of focus, let's say I was using the camera right now, I'm not, but if I was, you would have to get out of focus, and then I'd have to be super still. Because if I did this, I'm out of focus. So how usable would autofocus be on any lens, regardless of whether it's compatible or not, if it's a single point, one time thing and not continuous? Again, I don't know this to be a fact yet. Maybe they're going to surprise us and actually release continuous autofocus that somehow manages to be equal to, I don't know, on the Panasonic GX series? GH series, not X. I was thinking Fujifilm because, you know, Fuji, Fuji autofocus is also not, ter not terrific. <laughs> um, but maybe, but the likelihood of anyone thinking, I'm going to buy this camera and I'm going to switch from whatever I'm using to move into this because it's got autofocus for select compatible lenses and think that you're going to end up with autofocus that is similar to what you can get out of a Sony or out of a Canon, you might be disappointed. It just doesn't seem like it could actually be that. But again, we'll see. Once it comes out, am I tempted to buy one? No. But will I rent one? Maybe. Because... I kind of like to see companies innovate. But again, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I will buy one. Am I going to replace my red cameras? Of course I am. <laughs> uh, So the camera's supposed to ship this summer. So one of the things that over the years I've had to learn the hard way is to stop getting excited about what isn't real yet. <laughs> I used to get excited about that stuff all the time. I used to be like, yep, I'm going to do this. I want to do that and so on and so on forth with different announcements. The fact is, is that, you know, Let's look at Sony. Sony says, oh, yeah, by the way, we developed this awesome camera that can shoot, you know, a ridiculous amount of burst stills, and it's got a global shutter. But until you actually use it or see it in, in, in play, you can't really judge whether it's good or not. Opposite of what Red did, right? Red's like, yeah, we got Red Komodo. It's a um, Super 35 sensor. It's got a global shutter. And by the way, check this out. And it's shipping tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that was pretty awesome, the way that Red did that. They're like, oh, you want to talk about a full frame global shutter camera? Well, we're shipping ours tomorrow. And by the way, it's not just full frame. It's full frame Vista Vision. <laughs> yeah so it's um i don't know it's kind of cool but we'll see once it releases in the summer again maybe once we have more detail and once we see how the lenses actually perform in real world environments not environments that are dedicated to make something look great then we'll be able to judge you know that performance Regardless, the fact that Blackmagic is pushing in that direction makes people like you and I winners because it makes all the other brands go on notice. Like, y'all either step up and keep up or please get out of the way because we're going to innovate. That's just a fact. Uh, let's see. I do like, and this is one of those... Um, maybe weird things, but I really like the fact that Blackmagic decided to keep that gigantic screen 
and put it on the side of the camera and that might be why it's a rectangle instead of a box. That big screen is nice. It's big, it's bright, it's visible, it's responsive. And once you calibrate it, the colors are actually pretty good. You know, do you have to calibrate it? Yeah. Will you always have to calibrate it? Probably. Um, are there chances that you're going to get some weird hues here and there? Maybe because, you know, it's black magic. But at $3,000, can you even complain about it? Because that inconvenience of calibrating the, the monitor so you can see colors for what they are and you only pay three grand. I mean, that's kind of hard to like say and wish something was different. I think <laughs> for for what that's worth. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I, I had in my notes that I hope that the new monitor doesn't struggle with colors, but there's no way that this is a brand new monitor. I think they're just essentially recycling parts from the original full frame 6K and other cameras, other pocket cameras, and making it or putting them into this new camera, which, you know, kudos to them. Because they didn't like they didn't say that's a five thousand dollar camera. It's a three thousand dollar camera. Can't complain about that. So I've actually heard and have seen people complain about this. I'm bringing out the Raptor because I don't have a black magic camera. But people complain about a monitor being on the side. So this is a Raptor, Raptor X, right? Komodo X has the monitor at the top. Sony Venice has the monitor on the side. I believe, yeah, it is on the side. Professional, more professional cameras, I should say, cinema cameras anyway, have the monitors on the side because they're not really intended for a one-man band to operate. They're intended for you to have some help around the camera. And if you're the operator... You can't be hogging and blocking the ability for somebody to help you. So I think this is Black Magic's way of saying, if you don't like the monitor on the side, get over it. Because as your career grows and expands and you begin to work with more expensive cameras in bigger productions and much larger scales of productions, this is the norm. So if you don't like it, Understand that we're trying to help you grow into it. That's my take. Um, I also like the fact that, and, and I think I've said this before, but the Blackmagic software that they run on their cameras in the way that you can select your exposure tools, you can select your frame rate, your project, and so on. It's responsive. It's easy. It's intuitive. It is simple. It is not, and it, even if it is, because I don't know how many pages deep it goes at this point. It's been a bit since I've used some. It doesn't feel fatiguing or difficult to get to what you need. So being able to keep that software experience on a new camera, it's actually going to be a very good welcome addition. And I would even say a value proposition to anyone who has used a Blackmagic camera in the past. Because you're effectively able to operate the camera just like you have any other Blackmagic camera. And that is cool. Um... I'm actually curious, and, and I, because I didn't have a video plan for today. In fact, 
I wasn't going to make another video until I was in Ireland, and I'm leaving for Ireland on Sunday. So I want to know, and maybe you all can chime in in the, in the chat here, but how many of you actually purchased the Black Magic Pocket 6K? I'm curious. I was tempted. I'm not joking. The, the main reason why I didn't is because I don't want to buy a bunch of L mount lenses. I don't. I have a ton of EF lenses and I have a lot of RF lenses. So I didn't want to start a new collection of L mount lenses, which is the main reason why I didn't even think about looking in the direction of the full frame 6K. I've seen some of the images and they look beautiful. I hate that on the 6K full frame, you don't have the ability to record in, in ProRes anymore. Now you have to record in um, Blackmagic RAW or B-RAW. I suspect that on these new cameras, that same thing happens. This is likely how and why they're able to keep the price lower. And that's actually okay because B-RAW flies in Resolve. And I love using Resolve. So again, Blackmagic just sort of looking at the entire experience for people like you and I, and then figuring out what are those gaps and then how do we fill them? And I think that is dope. I really do. And, and I wish the rest of the camera companies would sort that shit out because that is what brings real genuine value not just excitement over hardware to someone like you and i right if you're helping me all along my production whether it be from pre-production to being on set to being able to send my files to a remote editor so they can help me have content ready to go within minutes or hours after i shoot it to be able to spread out on social media or to do a final delivery because the software is just so well optimized regardless of my system. And then you're allowing me to use media that's affordable and the lenses that I want. Oh, and by the way, if you need to rig this camera, we're going to give you the accessories that you might need to rig it any way you want. I'm just going to say, Blackmagic needs to keep that foot on that pedal and keep pushing so that everyone either catches up or gets the hell out of the way. That's the main reason. Like, the workflow thing is one of the huge reasons why I started shooting, I'm going to say at this point, 90% of my motion on red cameras. That workflow help truly does help, and it turns into cash in your pocket. Okay, so I, I know I'm like way behind here, and I'm so behind on my comments. So give me one second here. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to say this, and again, this is going to be one of those things that might be polarizing for some people. But this Black Magic camera, I don't think it can compare directly with any red camera, particularly any red camera that has a global shutter, because Global shutter kind of matters, and it matters, and it should matter to you all and, and a lot of people a lot more than it probably does today if you're not already in that space. And I'll say this. The main reason for it has everything to do with virtual production. It doesn't matter. Like, let's say this was an LED volume or screen behind me. That global shutter is going to make your life way easier. And if you're not already shooting, it doesn't matter if it's a talking head or an interview where the background is actually a virtual background. 
not green screen, but a virtual background. Or you're actively shooting motion in a virtual background that needs to be 3D tracked. That is where you're going to be. That's where we're all going to be. That's where AI is going to try to facilitate and make it affordable for all of us to end up a lot faster than many people think. So if I was going to compare a Komodo X or even an OG Komodo against that camera, I would say that that was the near miss from Blackmagic. Because if they're able somehow to manage a global shutter into one of their camera systems at a price point that actively competes or literally cuts that price point down, instead of being 40% of what a red camera could be, it could be a lot closer to 90% of what a red camera could be. And that's when, again, we all begin to see the benefits. Of course, there are other factors, and I'm going to go into them, and, and some other people are not going to love what I'm about to say. And I'm warning everybody, so you know, but I'm being fair. I think I'm being fair. <laughs> Black Magic cameras have had challenges with their quality control, let's just say. Hopefully, this is better. Can you complain about quality control when you're only paying $3,000 for something that should be closer to $10,000? You know, you begin to like check yourself and think, well, maybe that's not fair. Black Magic cameras, I think every one of their cameras, at this point, every one of their cameras that I'm aware of has suffered from IR pollution. Will they fix it in this camera? And my guess is probably not because they are recycling parts from their pocket full frame 6K. Maybe there's a way for their chip that is doing the debayering to correct for it so that you don't have that issue, but we don't know and won't know until the camera ships. But can you complain about IR pollution when you're only paying $3,000 for a camera? And the answer probably is no, right? Because most of the people, at least some of the people that I've met over my career, where if that is your budget, then you understand that you got some things you, you got to work around. And IR pollution is probably not going to be the one thing that you're going to be like, oh, no, I'm going to pay $10,000 so I don't have to deal with IR pollution. Most people are not going to do that. Will some people complain about fixed pattern noise? Because that's another issue that has come up and did come up with the pocket full frame camera. And again, the answer really is that most people are not going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to step up into a $15,000 or $25,000 camera so I don't have to deal with fixed pattern noise. So if there is, I don't know this to be true, but if there is fixed pattern noise, but you only paid $3,000 for the camera, you're going to find a way to work around it. Because I know I would. And that's just the fact.
And of course, can you complain about the build quality or the types of materials that are used to build a camera when you're only paying $3,000 for the camera? I'll say this. <clears throat> the iPhone, right? Titanium, whatever, whatever, whatever. Completely maxed out. It's half the price of this camera. <laughs> so would I complain about the plastic build or blemishes in the plastic, which some of my friends and I have seen where we bought a brand new camera and then we get some big giant scuff mark in the plastic um, as we open up the box or whatever. And the answer is you just kind of deal with it. I know I'm getting thumbs down because, you know, people don't want to hear the shit. And it's, it's okay. But the fact is, is that these are some of the challenges and some of the things and some of the compromises that anyone who chooses to buy a Blackmagic camera or Blackmagic product, for that matter, end up having to accept. And there's nothing wrong with accepting them if the tool fits the project and the job and what you're trying to achieve. And I'm one of those people that when I tried to shoehorn a solution into something that didn't fit, then I just made the switch. But for before I got to that point, I used the hell out of the Blackmagic cameras. I made as much money as I could out of them because of all of the value proposition that they had to offer. And I think that is still true today. I think black magic cameras have a very good value proposition. And if you've been around this channel for a bit, or you follow the channel for some time, you will never hear me say that there is a better camera to learn what we do filmmaking, content creating, videography, cinematography, than a black magic camera. It gives you all the tools that you need for your on-day production and all the tools that you need in a way that saves you a ton of cash to be able to deliver what you shot into whatever you're delivering to, whether it be fixed media, streaming, a social media, you name it. They make it super, super easy and incredibly affordable to get into this world of content creating and production or whatever you want to call it today. So... I think there's a lot of a lot of really really good things. I guess in short, I'm not getting rid of my red cameras. And I'm sure you all sorted that out already. <clears throat> That's not going to happen. Mainly because Previously, I've outgrown the Blackmagic cameras. Not because the Blackmagic cameras don't have what it takes to, to produce beautiful images, but rather because some of the production stuff that we do requires the cameras to be a little hardier, or maybe in some cases a lot hardier, and a lot, like significantly more consistent from one body to the other. And that's something I've talked about a lot when it comes to RED cameras, right? I could shoot a project on Raptor X or Helium or Monstro and put them through the exact same imaging pipeline, IPP2, and end up with results that effectively match minus, of course, the difference of 
Super 35 versus full frame. When, because I think it's going to happen, so when Blackmagic gets to that point, then the gloves came out for everyone. And basically, Blackmagic will put every camera company on notice. Today, it's not quite there. But it doesn't mean Blackmagic is not moving in that direction and then strategically positioning themselves in a way that allows them to get incremental gains across the lifespan of a production faster than every other camera company on the planet today. If they made their own lenses, um, I guess that's what's missing in the ecosystem because then they could actually work on, you know, things like autofocus. But I think they're doing a hell of a job at pushing the envelope and then incentivizing the other camera companies to keep innovating. So that's all I had. Um, I'm gonna try and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try and get through through some of these um, messages here. So see you when you come back. Awesome, David. Yeah, I, I should be back on the 30th or so. So that'll be kind of fun. Art in HDR. Good to see you, man. Ali, good to see you. Thanks for the laugh. La Caraja. This means that the other camera companies, other value price of their cameras, can they make them cheaper? I think they can make them cheaper. I think that the reason why they don't make them cheaper, La Caraja, is because, guess what? They don't have to. But I think the more Black Magic pushes that envelope, the faster. I mean, think about this. When the C500 Mark II came out, it was at a price point that was here. And then other cameras began to get released. And all of a sudden, the C500 Mark II came down in price, what, by like almost 10 grand? So this type of push helps all of us win. And it isn't really a race to the bottom, but rather it's a race to give us the tools and the features that make our lives easier. I think that that matters quite a bit. The micro panel, though, was awesome. So I I haven't watched that video yet. I need to. Or I need to watch the whole video. I just started watching, and then I was like, I should do a live. And that's how I ended up here, Ali. <laughs> um, what about rolling shutter? So then there's that, right? Rolling shutter is, is true. And... For anyone who is shooting action or tracking subjects, um, yeah, rolling shutter. I mean, even the the uh, Sony Burano has rolling shutter problems. So think about that. In fact, the Sony Burano, to me, I know this is blasphemous for some people, but the Sony Burano, to me, um, has similar rolling shutter to what the 1DC had which was horrible. I love the 1DC, but it was still horrible rolling shutter. <clears throat> uh, need to wait the second version. Pixie 6K, more frames, more DR. You know, as time goes on, I think you're right, John. Um, I think that, you know, the Mark II versions of anything is going to continue to improve. And I also think that once Blackmagic burns through the sensors that they have, the processors that they have, and they can begin to invest in new ones, um, they will continue to get better. I think the main reason why we ended up with this camera that effectively is the exact same camera in a different form factor is because of the parts that were available and on hand to be able to make this happen. So it's just, it's kind of been the way Blackmagic is, and it's not a bad thing, it's just the way that it is. Um, cool, let's see. And the lack of OD internal NDs. So, <clears throat> I, 
I think Black Magic kind of learned their lesson with the whole internal NDs on the camera that did have them. I think they realized that that's probably not something they want to keep doing because quality control. I, I don't know how else to say that in a way that it's not going to offend people, but your sensor and your image processing need to be then matched to the quality of the ND that you're using because if any one of those three things fail, you end up with pollution that you don't want. And I think that makes it more complicated to keep a price point that Blackmagic is known for and wants. So that's probably what it's going to be. So close to pre-order, but no NDs. I need to hear more about the autofocus and EF lenses. Scotty, I'm going to say don't hold your breath. Um, I kind of talked about this uh, earlier, and obviously I'm going back through past comments, so you probably heard me say this. But my guess is that the autofocus that we're talking about is very similar to what we have seen from previous Blackmagic cameras, which are great if you're using them for stills, but this is not a stills camera. So the minute that anybody shifts, that single point autofocus that you just took is now garbage. Unless you're shooting at like F11, where you're giving yourself 15, 16 inches worth of depth of field to be able to do this number. And most people, that's not how they're using it. So I'm going to guess it's not going to be terrific. I think I wait and see if there's going to be a lot of vids titled, I should never have bought this camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's possible. I, th I think it's... Um, here's the thing. Asking somebody to spend $3,000 on a camera, that you can decide what lens you want to put on that camera, right? So like for somebody like me, it's tempting enough because I already have a ton of EF lenses. So do I buy it? And if I don't like it, I could sell it. It, it could happen. Like it could happen. Also, is, is the new cam just going to be a Rehouse Pocket 6K as I got rid of mine? The answer is yes. <laughs> and I know some people are going to hate that, but look at it on paper. Compare it to what the other one was and ask yourself, why didn't I buy the Pocket 6K full frame? And if the answer is because it wasn't something you needed, then you likely don't need this one. If the answer is you didn't buy it because it had the wrong lens mount, well, then it becomes a little interesting for you because now you got a choice. Now you have the ability to use EF or PL lenses natively on the camera so will you buy it um how about the battery situation any, any ideas if they will add a v-mount situation no there mm, it doesn't look like it to me but i don't know i guess i don't know the answer um sdi is more than welcome sdi is more than welcome and like i said i wish every single camera company every camera company should at least give us the option of having one SDI, even one, right? Because if you're running a wireless transmitter, you could use the SDI out to go to your wireless transmitter, and then you could use the loop out on the wireless transmitter to do an external monitor, which allow you to basically have two SDI sources. They're not independent, so then there's that, but it's better than zero or better than having to rely, like in my case, with the camera I'm using right this second, micro HDMI. Who wants micro HDMI? Who wants HDMI, period? Not me. Absolutely agree, Content Shark. <laughs> Actually, I think you need to watch the whole video, um, and then you'll sort, you'll sort that, that out, I think. Um, this year's Black Magic updates makes me feel guilty for not ma ma mastering Resolve. Maybe this year, um, I'll just say that for all of us who work in the industry, learning Resolve 
is probably the best way to spend our professional development free time because it is really, really powerful. <clears throat> Thanks for selling me all your red cameras. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it won't be this year, uh, Frosty, but <laughs> I, I just, I, I couldn't resist. I had to use that title. So we need to uh, do so love streams together. Dude, anytime you want, Levi, I'm up for it. I am not going to NAB because I am, I actually, I took a job in Ireland. So I'm flying out tomorrow and I'm back April 30th. So I'm going to be in Ireland working on a project there. I'm pretty excited about it. I hope to have some time to um, see the country. But yeah, I, I'll miss NAB because I'm going to be in Ireland. Thanks again, Levi. Is is this just a better house cinema camera 6K? Yes, it is. How does it beat the Komodo in image quality? Um, I'm going to tell you that I'm biased. I'm going to tell you why I'm biased. I don't think it could beat the red cameras in image quality. I think it does a very good job at creating a unique image with enough character to bring back nostalgia very similar to what we might expect or see out of a Fujifilm camera with a film emulation that is baked in to your final image but I don't think it can compete straight up one to one against any of the red cameras We'll see. Um, and, you know, if, if there's enough interest, I will get my hands on one and literally put them side by side in a variety of scenarios so that we can all see and then make them downloadable so that you all can sort out, you know, how that might work for you. If there's enough interest, I'll do it. Um, absolutely, Levi, whenever you want, I'm up for it. Now everyone is jumping on black magic. Ha ha. <laughs> Again, um, you might want to watch the whole video. <laughs> they are good cameras. And they are late to the game in some ways. But at the same time, they're pushing the industry, which is actually not a bad thing for many of us, for many reasons. Hey, Carlos, great live stream. Why do you think Canon never managed to do what black magic is doing in terms of ecosystem? Honestly, because... I don't think, see, Canon is an imaging company, right? So for them, you know, whether it be an oncology machine, so the cameras that, the cameras, the systems that image the inside of your body through ultrasound and so on and so forth, you know, make sure people don't have cancer or to screen for cancer and so on, all the way to printers and, of course, their lenses and the cameras that can then resolve what the lenses can do, that is what Canon is. And I think what one thing that Blackmagic has done exceptionally well is that they started out as a software company. And then, of course, they had their live production video village hardware piece in place. And then they said, well, what if we had our own cameras? And they kept expanding into different spaces that then has allowed their ecosystem to really evolve in a way that maybe when they started they didn't realize we would all end up becoming hybrid shooters but now benefits probably the most out of you know unless you're like at the top level making 700 million dollar Hollywood films, 
the black magic ecosystem makes it affordable for eff effectively companies of all sizes, including one man band people, to be able to afford the gear and the equipment to allow them to go from a commercial production to a live production environment to a content creation environment at a relatively affordable price compared to the competition. So I think, I don't think that was Canon's end game at all, ever. Great live stream, good discussion. Thanks, Frosty. Appreciate it. DJI, LiDAR Pro, and done. So then there's that, right? That's the other company that's like, like literally nipping at everybody else because they're basically saying we're building our ecosystem to allow a one-man crew, three-man crew, or larger production to exclusively use our products end-to-end -end except for post-production. So if DJI ever taps into that space or into the live production space, then that's when they're going directly after a black magic. But before then, they're absolutely targeting companies like Canon, like Sony, like Red, like Fujifilm, like Panasonic. They're absolutely doing that. Damn, I missed a lot of a lot of comments. Ken, good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> hey, I'm like I'm never getting rid of my EF lenses. Um, it's just they they're awesome. They still work. Light dart is useless on full frame at 85 millimeters at f1.2 for headshots. It would only do full body shots. Um, I've never tested it, but I'm going to take your word for it because I know how technical you are. So there, there we go. Black Magic Design was definitely not playing around. No, they weren't. And I think, again, King, I think they're putting people on notice saying, we're going to keep pushing and you all need to step up or get out of the way. I also think that the more that people push, like other companies push, the more they push Black Magic to sort out how to even be better than what they are. Love the form factor. Black Magic Design really does an amazing job on their cameras, structure, and software. The ecosystem is unmatched at this point from a camera company. I realize they're not a camera only company, but they are definitely owning that space. I just wish it had NDs. Even if they made it at 4K, it would be amazing. I think that quality control is one of the things that Blackmagic has struggled with, continues to struggle with. And when you add another variable or series of variables, because clearly you're going to need more than one ND, then you're complicating that quality control um, structure, which is making it difficult for them to maintain a price point. And I don't think that I don't think they're ready to try to compete like head to head against a camera like Sony or Canon or Red. Clearly not Airy. Um, so they're trying to win the market from the bottom up and then out instead of trying to go for the top and then trying to sort of drip their way down into the market. They're trying to get the early adopter, the younger content creator, DP, videographer person, someone with the least amount of resources and cash, get them up and running, and then build them out into their ecosystem. So get them at the lowest possible price point that you can. They will continue to invest in you and spread out and buy more of your products over time. I think that that's their strategy. I don't know. They don't talk to me about that. Hell, they don't talk to me. That's the truth. Uh, <clears throat> I wish they had a removal. 
So again, I think the more things that we all would want or need or would like, the more complex it becomes for black magic to stay at a price point. So I don't think that would ever happen. <clears throat> hey, Carlos, this is the first set of black magic cameras that I've been interested in ever. Keep my expectations tempered for the price, but also, yeah, magical. Andrew, I, I can't disagree with you. I feel like this is the most complete version of a black magic camera. And I think that what we're about to see from Black Magic, you know, over the next year and two or three, is an evolution into their ecosystem that really makes it difficult. And keep in mind, regardless of what most people, regardless of the level even that most people are shooting at, if you're shooting something for Netflix, chances are. It's being streamed at 1080. And chances are is that it's actually being streamed to the, the content recipient, the person watching it on their TV or on their phone at 720p and then being upscaled by the hardware of the device that you're watching it in to 1080 or fake 4k because that's just the way that broadcast works so keep that in mind <clears throat> i think a lot of people saying that complaining about things here and that i've been online have no real interest in working in production they just want to nag because nobody's hired <laughs> i i i'm not gonna disagree with you andrew I think you're right. <clears throat> Can I? I already forgot why you say you didn't buy it. So it must have been something I said. No black magic. They need a real pro camera. Have a great trip. Thanks, Frosty. And um, I think that this is a good step into their pro, um, their pro system. I think once they sort out their quality control challenges, I think that we're we're in for a treat with black magic. Blackmagic UI is clean and easy to understand. Blackmagic UI is probably one of the best in the industry. Um, I do really like the way that the red UI is now on DSMC3, but the Blackmagic one reminds me of using my cell phone. And that's just convenient and easy. It's like Red Ass Black Magic to wait on this release so they could make some sales. <laughs> this would have cut into Komodo X release. Um, potentially it would have. I think you're right, Scotty. I think that one thing that, that I at least have noticed with a lot of Red users and people that I hang around with um, on a regular basis is that no one who shoots Red exclusively shoots on Red. That's also true for Aerie. No one that shoots on Aerie exclusively only shoots on Aerie. They have another system. So if I had to replace my RED cameras, would I run to Blackmagic straight away? I'm not sure that my answer is yes today. I think that the only camera system that I could 100% rely on wholeheartedly for the stuff that we do, it would pull me back into the Canon world where I was using the Canon cinema line and then backing them up with the Canon R5C, which is exactly what I do now with my red cameras. The R5C, I have a R and R5C. No, and is only for vowels. So I have a Canon R5C that literally lives side by side to every single one of my red cameras. And that's just the way that that works. The fact that you can build your own side plate is also when that was truly a modular idea. Andrew, I, you know, I, I know I talked about this earlier in the live stream, but 
when a camera company give us the tools that we need to potentially rig on multiple different environments or situations without us having to franken rig a whatever support bracket mix and max mix and match pieces from other manufacturers to try to make that one thing that we want work i wish every camera company did it because 100 percent, every time i would buy that camera i would buy the accompanying accessories to make it easy for me to work with in any way that i need it on set and that's just a fact <clears throat> Not everyone needs red camera capabilities. I think it's like 99% of what video makers expect for that price point. I'm just going to say that if you're delivering to social media primarily or corporate video where they're just either archiving or putting onto their website, you're absolutely right. If you're doing anything that is more like organized or orchestrated production, then I would disagree with you. If you're doing a mix of the two, then I would think that that number is a lot closer to 60% than it is to 99%. Because orchestrated production in any way, whether it be a live event or something like run and gun shooting, requires more than what this camera is able to offer. So you're who Marcus made fun of. Did Marcus make fun of me? Who's Marcus? I don't know who Marcus is. I'm selling my Sony. Sony needs to bring all their cameras down. I mean, Sony makes pretty good cameras. Most of the people that I know that have Sony cameras really like them. And they really like the workflow and they really like just the way that the whole thing works. So I guess I'm not following. Which camera do you own, Mighty? Curious. Richard Peña, good to see you, man. Hidalgo, good to see you, dude. Yanis, I guess there won't be an IR pollution since it has an OL FP or PF. I think it's OLPF. Um I'm, I'm going to say that we'll see, but my guess is there will be some IR pollution. 77 News, good to see you, dude. For the price, it beats all the cameras. No doubt, three grand, who's going to complain about it? I'll tell you, I won't complain about it. Three grand? You can't complain about so many things. Because no matter what you find as a fault with the camera, when it only costs $3,000, which likely means you're making that every single time you put it to work, it's easy to say, I will work around that challenge, whatever that challenge is. So you're right. It's worth the money. Also, you'll be able to use for many, many, many years to come. I mean, yeah, 6K is obviously higher resolution than 4K, and 4K, while it seems to be the standard, at least in broadcast and on social media, it's not, at least not yet, not truly yet, and not really implemented that way because it really is 1080 if we look at it. And if it's streaming, it's really 720. And if it's live streaming, it's 360p. Those are the standards. So you're right. You will have the ability to grow with it and make some money over the long haul. And that is, of course, important. The 17K with Hasselblad mount. Okay? So I need to familiarize myself with that before I say anything about it. I just bought a used red. Should I sell it to get this one? Pablo, um, I am not selling my reds. I love what I'm able to get out of a red and how easy and forgiving the red is and how quickly I can move through a production with it. So I'm the wrong person to ask that question because I am biased 
towards I'm biased towards red. Uh, let's see. The more black magic pushes the envelope, the better for all of us and the better the tools become for all creative. Absolutely 100% true. The more black magic puts other camera companies on notice, the more it pushes their development life cycle, the more it pushes their release life cycles, and the more we all potentially end up saving money and streamlining our workflows. Absolutely agree. Should I get an EF mount or an L mount? I would say, how many lenses of each do you have? And then make a decision based on your lens collection. If you have an EF lens collection, there is no reason to get rid of them because they are still excellent lenses. If you have no lenses and you're starting over, then you have the luxury of essentially picking which direction you want your career to go. And that's probably the best advice I could give in that scenario. Autofocus paired with a LiDAR system. I don't know that you could actually have autofocus. because See, this is the way it works, at least on red cameras. So let's say I had autofocus engaged on my Raptor X. The minute I turn the lens, the autofocus will jump to get whatever I was trying to shoot into focus. And now me moving the lens doesn't really change my focus. I need to put my lens into manual mode in order for me to affect what is in focus and when it's in focus. So all that to say that pairing in-camera autofocus with an external system that like the DJI system that is then helping the lens sort out its focus, it's going to butt heads and not give you the results that you would want or expect. At least not from my experience, but maybe this is a new hybrid version and a collaboration between DJI and Blackmagic, which it doesn't sound like it is, but if that ever happened in the future, then maybe that would actually be a thing. But at least now, it isn't. Uh, Pixis, Canon Cinema Lenses, and DJI Focus Pro, or just keep my Canon C70 with all that? <laughs> Scotty, you always ask the best questions. If I was you in that scenario, I would keep my C70. <laughs> Are you serious? After all the red stuff you've posted, you're selling your reds? Um, you're going to need to watch the whole video, dude. <laughs> Short answer, no. I'm not selling my reds. <laughs> um, can't wait for the 12K M2. Let's go. I'm happy with 8K. 8K is more than enough for the stuff that I'm doing today. If I was doing array work, I think that I would need more than 8K. But for broadcast, corporate, social media, and commercial work, which is the space that I work in, 8K is, 8K has me covered for the next five to six years, easy, with zero compromises. Okay, I was about to say, still watching from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you'll want to watch the whole thing. Um, the worst, best part of all is that your vertical shooters, the screen is on top. Vertical shooting is still something that I... Um, I'm trying to find a way to embrace it. <laughs> we do it, but I don't love it yet. And and that's just where I'm at. Um, he thought it over, and I'm selling his black magic to buy more reds. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, which mount of the pixels would be best? Which is future-proof? I already have a set of EF lenses, but I don't want to be stuck on the EF mount. So, I mean, it is easy to go down the rabbit hole of buying new lenses because of a lens mount. So I, I would say that if you're going the motion route in your career and you're doing less of the stills work 
in your career, then PL is probably the safest bet. Also, likely the most expensive way to go if you're going to go with a lens mount because of the cost of PL lens mounts or PL lenses, PL lenses that have a PL mount, whatever that meant. Um, so if that's what you were intending to do, I think that that would be a way to go. For us, in my company, we're keeping the EF because EF allow us to use the focal reducer and OG Komodo, give us full frame of view. Terrific color reproduction and performance out of those lenses on Komodo, um, OG Komodo. So we're going to keep those. The future for us is RF lenses. So RF mount matters. If I was going to buy one of these cameras today, I wouldn't pick the L mount because I don't own any L mount lenses. And I wouldn't pick... The PL mount, again, because I don't have a PL lens mount collection. I would pick the EF mount because I can adapt my lenses. Not adapt. I could mount them directly to the camera and use my EF lenses. But that's always a tough choice because lenses aren't cheap. Lenses are like a way bigger investment than any camera body anyone will ever make. So, yeah, it's worth thinking about. <laughs> um, sooner the reality of EF is probably best for versatility since there is EF to PL adapters. I would say, I would agree with Liam. I think that, that that makes a lot of sense. And if you already have EF lenses, like that just seems to make a tremendous amount of sense. How's the EVF? Um, I don't have the camera, uh, so I can't give you that answer yet. Should I sell my used Epic MX under 100 hours? How do you have a camera, that age of a camera, and only have that few hours on it? So I guess the, the real question is, do you need it? Because if you don't need it, then then maybe you shouldn't buy it. And if you do need it or you want it or you just flat out have, you know, three grand burning in your pocket and you want to buy something new, then maybe. But if you're not shooting with a camera that much, there might be a better way for you to make money with those three grand than to buy another camera, in my opinion. I think my main issue is that they can provide all of these bells and whistles, but the image isn't as good. There's so much you can do in Resolve. There is a lot you can do in Resolve. And Resolve keeps getting better and better and better, and the visual effects um, tools that they keep adding in there give you so much flexibility. It's, it's kind of crazy. And this is what I mean about the whole ecosystem. Like, Blackmagic's got that nailed. Like, they've sorted out how to, again... Go for that low tier, that low hanging fruit person that is looking for a camera and then bringing them in and then selling them across a broader band or broader amount of their products. So it's it's really, really interesting. I sold my red camera and I just had problems all the time and has been a nightmare. Also, now that Nikon bought the company, I think the price of the actual reds will drop like crazy. Luca, it, it could happen. Um, you know, I think the the news release that came out was it last night or yesterday from Nikon said nothing's changing, and Jared is a special advisor, which probably means Jared will be like, "No, you guys are being dumbasses. If you want to go in that direction, you really should go in this direction," and that could help the camera brand a lot. Time will tell, though. <clears throat> there are already videos titled Selling My Komodo X for it. <laughs> I bet there are. 
Bashford, don't don't sell your Dragon X for your, yeah, no. I mean, and the Dragon X is a beautiful, beautiful camera and sensor. Um, if I had one of those cameras, I don't think I could ever sell it, to be honest. I completely agree with this statement from Ali, 100%. I was thinking of the R6 Mark II, but Pixie's looking like a winner. Camera talk. Um, I think it it depends, right? So here's my take. If you're one of those people who uses features like autofocus, you don't want to buy a Blackmagic camera. If you're one of those people that never uses autofocus, you want to shoot anamorphic and you want to have small file sizes that are easy on your computer and you work in a Resolve workflow, then this camera is probably ideal for you. Um, Fusion page is incredible. Yeah, Fusion keeps getting, I mean, I really like After Effects and it took a long time for me to like really learn After Effects. So I'm really comfortable in After Effects. Fusion is like, it takes it takes some learning, but it can do whatever After Effects can do. So it's I'm kind of impressed. Jim was also given the advisor role along with Jared. Yep, both Jim and Jared are special advisors. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so we've been at this for a while. <laughs> An hour and 46 minutes. This is crazy. Okay, so thank you everybody for taking the time to jump in on here for your comments. Really appreciate you all. Hopefully some of this was useful and a little entertaining. And in case any of you missed it, obviously I'm not selling my red cameras, but this is a tempting camera. And it's also a very good move, smart move on Blackmagic's um, position in the market because it tempts everyone that I know of. <laughs> it makes it incredibly tempting. And um, yeah, I will catch up with you guys when I get back from Ireland. So around the 30th, sometime around there. Thanks again. Have a good weekend. And uh, until next time, take care.